Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a tool tip. Um, but this is a whole bunch of tool tips. So we're gonna have a sort of library of tool links in the, in the comments below. But this one is specifically about how we've been filming, how I've been filming in my cave for the past seven or eight months. Uh, when the lockdown first started, Norm Chan set up a camera for me with a microphone attached to it on a tripod and put it over in the corner of the shop. And I spent about half an hour setting up a shot, trying to talk to the camera, and I just didn't have it. I didn't have the energy. I know how to operate a video camera. I do, but I needed lower friction to get to work, to get to filming my work. And so I started using my phone. Uh, I started using my iPhone. And it turned out the footage was fine. I mean, the whole internet had lowered its resolution for COVID anyway. Uh, and the Apple front-facing camera is fantastic. And frankly, it's only getting better. I can't wait for the new 12 Plus. But I started filming everything on my phone and I started sculpting my shooting rig to be as fast and efficient for me as possible because I want to maintain a flow state of building. And at the same time, I really want to tell a story about the building. And that is a, that's a complicated thing. And I think everybody who makes stuff on YouTube has to grapple with this. Uh, for, for my own experience on Mythbusters, you know, Jamie and I and Carrie, Tori and Grant were all successful on that show because we were fast at doing what we did and we had to do it even more fast than that because we had to stop and talk about it all the time on camera. And that 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 back and forth between breaking your flow state and getting back into it is, that can be tough. So over the past few months, I have refined my tested shooting rig. And I just actually experimented with taking it all the way across country. I shot a, a, a diary of my trip across country. We're gonna cut it. We're not sure what kind of video we're gonna get out of it. But we're, gonna, we're gonna cut it into something. Uh, and this rig was perfect for taking across country. This is, this, is, this is the sum total of my tested shooting rig. And I'm gonna walk you through all of the contents. Yes, this is one of my bags. This is a custom one uh, made of Dyneema. I love this one. Uh, you can get these on adamsavage.com. Uh, everything I need is in here. I'm gonna lay it out and walk you through all the parts and the pieces. And I'm actually gonna have a little bit of trouble here because my phone here, the one I'm shooting on, is mounted to one of the key pieces of equipment. Stop that. Um, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to hold my phone with something else. All right, let's get started. First and foremost is the slate. This I made so that I could do some information management on my phone, but it's, I love this thing. I, it actually helps me get my head in the game. Um, I use it for every shoot. I don't use it for every shot, but I use it at the beginning for all my tops and my tails. And uh, yeah, I've got uh, tool tips, one day builds, Show and tells. I think I need another one. I can't remember what it is, but we're, we're toying around with a new category of video. And uh, yeah, I use the, so alongside the slate, which I did a one day build on, I also have uh, black masking tape, which I use for the labeling. And by the way, of all masking tapes, black masking tape is, it is the king of masking tapes. It's the, 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 the matte finish is just beautiful. I love, yeah. I love this tape. I love the way it feels. I love the way it peels off. It is my favorite. It is expensive. It tends to be more expensive than the green or the blue stuff, but this is great, great product. Um, to write on here, I use my favorite paint marker. This is a uh, Kugel's correction pen. This is a whiteout pen. Um, yeah, the quality of that writing, I just, I really love it. So. That is how I that is how I delineate each of the each of the pieces. Now, I have some other and some other chunks here. Let's see. Okay. So, 
This is one of the most key parts of this shooting setup. This is a clamp with some lock line attached to it that had a quarter 20 bolt out at the end. It is not sold this long. No, so what I did, and I needed it to be this long so I can really maneuver uh, and play around with this and I'll show you how I do that. But um, I really like this, this, this spring clamp. It's got a nice positive grab. It opens up quite wide. It, um, it easily, it easily grabs my big old bowling top table there. Um, so what I did to extend it was I simply bought some more lengths of lock line and I attached them together until I had it as long as I needed it. Um, how long is it? It is 30 inches long and 30 inches turns out to be the ideal. Now, how do I hold? Okay, hold on. Oh. Am I rolling? Wow, okay, I'm rolling. Uh, so here is the monopod with the foot attached and I rest it on the ground. Then what I do is I attach the Joby to the end of this and that's a nice positive grab. Okay, and then, uh, right, the phone goes in here. It's tightened down. And then when I want to shoot, I just grab this and set it up so that it's roughly where I want. and. It takes a little bit of positioning, and it's certainly not like crazy stable, but dude, that is about the fastest, lightest rig I can conceive of that gives me a face height, there we go, like a face height tripod without a tripod, right? This is, uh, this is really great. The, the, I will say this Manfrotto has un has undergone a huge amount of abuse and it has not shown any real wear and tear. Um, so I can set this up like this. I can also set it up like that and look down, right? Yeah, so I mean, it takes some balancing to get it right. And again, it's not super stable, but for one person working alone, this is fantastic. And it all bolts down, it all dismantles to fit in this humble bag. The last thing, the last pair of things that I needed is a cable and a charger. Because when I'm setting up like this, I don't want to have to be three feet or even six feet from a plug. I need to be way farther. And uh, Ryan Kaiser our, on Tested uh, found me this incredible cable. This is like 22 feet long. We're including a link below to one that I found. I, I think Ryan will have to give me the link to where he got this. This is crazy long and it charges the phone. It's beautiful. I can literally, yeah, it goes everywhere. And I have a, 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 a nice iHome uh, four plug, four plug uh, USB charger. And that's great for charging both my phone and the, uh, and the, uh, the, the tested phone. And uh, that's it. That is the sum total of our tested filming rig. Ah! Yeah, it's, again, not, in, not super stable, but super versatile. And for me, it provides the lowest possible friction to me working and also filming and telling stories about me working um, and that I get to enjoy both of those things uh, on the same plane. So uh, let's do one last recap, shall we? There you have it, the, my personal Savage tested shooting rig. It all fits in the Savage Industries bag, made of Dyneema, totally indestructible, purchasable on adamsavage.com. Uh, we've got our paint marker, our slate, and our black masking tape for dressing the slate. We've got our crazy super long USB cable that charges the phone, plus a USB charger that has more than one port so I can charge other things. We've got the Joby phone clamp here, nice and positive. Again, I wish it was spring-loaded, and sure, I could add a spring in there, but right now I like how positive it is. We've got my camera clamp with the added pieces of lock line to turn it into a 30 inch uh, extended arm on a clamp. We've got the tripod base for my monopod, my carbon fiber monopod, and there's my carbon fiber monopod. Okay, now I wanna make it clear that 
It's not like I've gone through every possible version of each one of these things and, have, and I'm letting you know that these are all the best versions of each one of these. No, 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 no. Some of these I've Frankenstein together out of parts that I had from other projects. Um, this is sort of what I Frankenstein together during lockdown to make myself a super versatile, easy to travel, lightweight shooting rig. But there are cheaper versions. There are less expensive versions of every single one of these parts. Uh, and if you have ones that you love, by all means, I would love to know about them. Uh, improvement is an ongoing process, not a not a, a, an end in and of itself. Uh, and this rig has proven to be perfect for me. I will tell you actually, as I was driving, this clamp with the extended arm was so fabulous for uh, time-lapse shots on the road, shots of me while driving and doing my pickups to camera while driving. Uh, it's also stunning in here. Uh, and I know, listen, I'm aware that I could do better about making sure you can see my hands and what I'm working on when I'm uh, doing one day builds. So um, I, I'm, that's not a problem with the equipment, that's a problem with the operator and I'm working on it, I, I promise. Um, if you have other parts and pieces that are like, that would complement this rig or stuff that you utilize, camera clamps that you have found are really robust, I'd love to know about them in the comments. <sighs> yeah, it's a moving target. I am very happy with this rig and I hope this information is useful to you if you are looking to tell stories about the things that you are doing. Thank you guys for joining me for this tool tip. Yeah, I can't believe what you can do now with technology. It's, it's pretty amazing. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.